Hello, and welcome to the second Halloween tutorial. Before we get started though, I have a few announcements to make. First, congratulations to Sonia Jones and Jobeth Sexton for winning my Peachy Keen coloring event. That's right, we have two winners this time. I just couldn't pick one over the other. They're both so incredibly beautiful. As a prize, both ladies get to enjoy all the benefits of being my patron for a whole month, which includes a folder full of coloring pages, early access videos, a patron Q&A, and many more fun things. If you're new to my channel, the events that I refer to are constantly happening in my Facebook group, Tom. There's probably one going on right now, no matter when you're watching this. And there's always a fun prize, so come join the club. Second, on the topic of my Facebook group, I'm looking for an admin to help me manage the group so that I can spend more time focusing on my art and videos. An admin should be around and be able to scan the group for new projects and activity, report to me if there are any questions that were posted to me directly and I didn't answer them immediately, manage the group photo albums, stuff like that. You should generally be a friendly presence in the group, especially on days when I'm not around. So if you think you're the right colorist for the job, please shoot me a private message on Facebook and we'll chat. And third, in the previous tutorial on Moonlight and Skeletons, I asked you to guess how long the coloring took in real time. Most guesses landed between five and eight hours. The truth is it took exactly two and a half. So there you have it. Apparently I work a lot faster than you think, which is cool. I do work very fast actually, and that's just a matter of practice, comfort, and habit. There's no need to go for speed. A coloring should take as long as it takes. All right, with that out of the way, let's color. Today, I want to talk about how to look glamorous even if you're dead, especially if you're dead, as a matter of fact, this being the month of all things spooky and dark. So to practice our skin tone coloring for the recently deceased, I've picked a character from my book, Nights and Mares Halloween. This is Countess von Bitten. But since we're focusing mainly on the face, I printed this page, zooming it in heavily and cropping out most of the background. This new revamped image is available on my Patreon page. Let's get started. I specifically chose to work on gray paper. Tan wasn't even an option in my mind. We're going for a cold, deathly look. We can use all the cool tones that we can get our hands on. Actually, we want to avoid natural skin tones, blush tones, and pretty much everything I taught you in the skin tone coloring tutorial. Of course, I start with my signature white charcoal. I'm using it quite heavily this time because I want the countess to be very pale. We don't really have a skin tone to work with anymore. The skin is now almost entirely white, but not an even uniformed white like a geisha's makeup might be. No, in death, the countess will have very heavy shadows under the cheekbones and around the eyes. The trick is to apply these shadows in a way that will accentuate her natural beauty, instead of making her look terrifying or disgusting, like a rotting zombie. The line between spooky and scary can be very fine. We're going for spooky glamour, not straight up horror. So we need to work with the natural lines of the face, which I've suggested here with my line work, and apply heavier than normal shadows in very unnatural tones, and always go for high contrast. I'm using three tones of gray and two tones of blue to build my shadows. I'm still creating smooth gradients, blending my dark colors and my white using a pale gray. But I'm keeping the gradients sharp, meaning that the transition from dark gray to white happens suddenly over a very small distance. Making such sharp gradients will help create the illusion of sunken cheeks and eyes, especially as I build up my dark gray and blue layers. Notice that I'm not using actual black. That would be too much contrast. If I used just black and white on her face, she would look skeletal and not at all glamorous. We want her to have skin and to have smooth and beautiful skin, just lacking the traditional natural skin tones. In the neck and the cleavage area, I'm working with the same colors, adding more bone definition though. I don't want to clearly define her rib cage and the clavicle area, again, avoiding the skeletal look, but I do want to show that she's skinnier than she normally would have been, yet still with very clean and very smooth skin. I'm also adding a soft lavender lilac to the skin tone. It's still in the cold color family, but it's the closest we'll get to an actual skin tone that's somewhat feminine. I'm going for an almost porcelain look on the skin here. You probably noticed that I'm switching my pencils a lot. 
making adjustments with this gray and that gray and you're probably wondering how I make these decisions. Before I started this coloring, I pre-selected all the colors that I knew I wanted to use on this piece. It's sometimes tempting to have the entire pencil set next to you as you color, especially if you have one of the professional 150 or 200 pencil sets like I do. That can be very disorienting. And you can grab colors that you think are a good idea, and then before you know it, you're using every color in a box. You want to remain consistent in your coloring. All the areas that are her skin in this drawing should be done in the same colors. I chose these eight colors as my weapons, knowing that I may not use all of them, but also knowing that I won't get seduced with the other colors in my pencil box. From the Prismacolor set, I picked 70% warm gray, 30% warm gray, 10% cool gray, one of those dark blues with a horrifically long and unattractive name. Prismacolors usually have such sexy names for their pencils. Look at these. Imperial Violet. Dahlia Purple, Grade Lavender, Espresso, delicious name. But when it comes to blues, Deoxazin Purple Hue, what is that? Ugh, awful. Anyway, back to our undead beauty. I'm taking this coloring in the lilac violet direction because I want some color, but I want the color scheme to be gloomy and cool. Lilac tones are perfect for that effect. They're kind of subtle and elegant, but not overwhelming. I do, however, want to avoid a monochromatic, nearly grayscale look for this coloring. My color choices should look like choices and not accidents. I demonstrate that by color contrast. I chose blood red for the makeup, just a touch of red, on the lips and around the eyes. As always, I'm applying the makeup effects over the skin tone coloring that I've already established. When it comes to the actual blood dripping from her lips, I chose to make the blood black. Again, I don't want this to come across as gruesome. I want her to be elegant. I would rather have the color red associated with the sexy lips and the exotic eyeshadow than with blood oozing from her mouth. The red will register in the eye of the viewer and the brain will connect red with blood. There's no need to paint the actual blood splatter red unless we want to focus the viewer's attention on the fact that she just fed on someone. That kind of misdirection is something we'll get into deeper in future coloring tutorials. Now, Every other element in this composition, the hair, the dress, the background, should be colored in a way that focuses the eyes on her face. I could make the hair a pale silvery color, which would be a very cool effect, but it would also match the face too well. We want to frame the face, to bring out the contrast in the sunken cheekbones. A dark but not a vibrant hair color is a much better choice. I'm using mostly my espresso pencil with a darker gray for shadows and a lighter gray for highlights. All the attention should be focused on the face here. So the hair's job is simply to frame it. I don't spend nearly as much time on the hair as I did on the face. In another light, in another setting, maybe I would go for full detail on the hair, for a different color maybe, but not here. Here I just need a mess of dark curls that are not distracting the viewer's attention from the face. Now for the dress, I went with purple to continue with my color scheme. I did allow for a pretty strong saturation on the dress to contrast the dead skin. After all, the dress doesn't die and lose its color, just the girl in it. So keeping a beautiful vibrant fabric will further our illusion of pale and unnatural skin but I'm staying in my purple color scheme so that the dress is not the main object of attention. And to really highlight the fact that the skin is intentionally pale and unnatural, I chose a warm orange for the background. A direct opposite to the Countess and her pale face. And finally, for the cherry on top, I'm using a white gel pen to add the glitter effect to the dress. So, let's take a look at the finished piece. What did we learn? What actually makes the Countess look obviously dead and glamorous at the same time? Mainly the color selection. Going with gray and lilac and completely avoiding traditional peachy and cream colors clearly makes her look somehow unnatural. But that isn't enough though, is it? After all, people don't look dead in black and white photos, usually. So to make sure that the skin looks intentionally pale and grayscale, I used a warm color on the background and red on the lipstick and the eyeshadow. As far as the face is concerned, I made sure to overwork the shadows on the cheekbones, making the cheeks look really sunken. And I used a similar effect around the eyes. But I avoided black to keep the skin's porcelain feel and not to take it too far into the undead effect. Which is also why I avoided pure red blood. That would have been a bit too graphic for the look that we're going for. Well, I did use some red on the top layer of the blood, but mostly it appears quite black. And there you have it. Countess Von Bitten. 
I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you can apply similar techniques to this or other characters that you may be coloring for a Halloween event. Please take a moment to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe to my channel if you don't already, and join me on Patreon to get this exact page and many more free and exclusive illustrations for your coloring pleasure. I'm Lisa Mitrokin, thank you so much for watching, I'll see you in the next video, bye!